Hello everyone and welcome back to my F2 2020 season in F1 2020. So, uh, last time out in Baku we had a pretty up and down time but we still hold the championship lead over Felipe Drogovic by 22 points. Pedro Pique uh, moving up into third uh, in Baku and uh, Matsushita dropping down out of the top three but still well in the fight. But uh, we get ready to go for our qualifying lap. You can see uh, in the top right corner we did leave it a couple of minutes before we got this lap started. So. Uh, I'm kind of wishing we went out right at the start of the session because you can see it's very dark and gloomy and there is rain uh, on the way very, very soon. So uh, this could be uh, our only shot uh, at setting a lap here. Uh, we, it may only be half a chance. Uh, we'll see as we go around the circuit uh, how uh, damp the conditions get and how quickly. But uh, yeah, we will uh, have to see uh, how this goes. But uh, through the first corner, big cut there uh, over the curbs. And uh, that's probably not uh, the most ideal line. But uh, anyway, we move on and uh, heading up uh, towards turn two, this very slight left-hander, and then uh, hard onto the brakes uh, into turn three, one of my favorite corners on the circuit, great for overtaking, but uh, on this occasion, we don't quite get through there as quickly as I think we could have, and uh, just not really getting this lap together, but uh, the grip uh, still feels okay, so the uh, track conditions are not falling away uh, quite yet, but uh, I don't think it will be too long uh, before that happens, so uh, through this middle sector is where uh, I think we can really uh, gain or lose the time uh, on this lap, so we need to try and live through these left-handers. The right side tyres very cold because they're the only real left-handers uh, on the circuit, so the right side tyres are uh, on a bit of a holiday here uh, in Austria. But uh, as we uh, round the uh, second of those two corners, uh, we do manage to survive those. But uh, you can see the rainy conditions are coming now. The water's uh, visibly uh, streaming down on the camera lens now, so uh, we uh, really... Uh, we've only just got to get this lap in before the conditions uh, start falling away and maybe even be a little bit too late already but uh, we come across the line and we only go p5 so uh, yeah we just really uh, do not have the pace we try another lap but there's no grip on the circuit anymore so uh, we'll just move on to uh, the end of the session and qualifying is complete and we're all set for an exciting race tomorrow your top three are joe galeo and gilami samaya with qualifying complete all that remains is the main event will be live and uninterrupted for the feature race tomorrow, so make sure you join us there. Sean Galeo is on the front row. Great work by Guan Zhou to take out pole position. Uh, the luck he needed in this season has been a pretty horrible start for him and uh, not what he would have been looking for uh, after a pretty successful first season. But uh, Samaya third. What a mixed up grid we have here uh, for this round. Sato with a great qualifying effort as well. So, he may be able to make amends for uh, the heartbreak of Baku where uh, he was on for some very solid points for the first time this season and uh, had uh, an engine failure. But uh, the, yeah, that's, that's going to make things very interesting uh, in this round. And uh, Matsushita with a good qualifying as well, so he may be able to get back into it. It's all very, very interesting. Guan Yu Zhou doesn't actually gain any positions despite what the little uh, indicator arrows say there uh, with the four points from pole position. But uh, he does stretch further clear of Mazepin, who's had a horrible campaign so far, it's got to be said. But uh, yeah, for uh, Sato and Galeo, two of the non-point scorers so far, they have good chance to uh, fix that this year, so this round. So uh, yeah, let's get into the race and uh, see how uh, this one plays out. I have no idea. Here we are amidst the dense forest and rolling hills of Spielberg in Austria, just two hours out of Vienna. It's an amazing destination for the race today, and we're about to get started. Spielberg is a very short lap, one of the shortest we'll see in this Formula 2 championship. Seven rights and three lefts make up the ten corners of the circuit. The left-hand kink of turn two leading into the uphill braking of turn three represents another overtake hotspot. As usual, I'm joined by our good friend Davide Valsecchi as we soak up the dramatic scenery. Do you think the drama will continue onto the track today, Davide? Ciao, Alex. I think we can guarantee that. Austria has always been a track that encourages the driver to overtake and attack. But it's a low grip surface. The drivers out there today will have to make sure that the tiny mistakes don't end up hurting them later in the race. As the engineers make their last inspection of the cars, let's take a look at today's grid order for the race. A fantastic effort from Guan Yu Zhou yesterday puts him on pole position, with Sean Galeal alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Samaya, Matsushita, Jack Aitken, and Sonoda, Sato, Markalon, Tictum, 
Nikita Mazepin, Deruvela, Schwartzman, Luca Giotto, and Schumacher, Nisani, Alesi, Delatrat, and Christian Lungard, PK, and Marcus Armstrong, Dragovic, and Callum Eilon start from the back of the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So, to uh, add another twist uh, into this race, uh, you may also notice Drogovic and PK starting right at the back of the grid. So, two of our championship contenders have a lot of work to do after the uh, qualifying session uh, did not go to plan for them. There's going to be rain in uh, the uh, later uh, portion of this race, however, that... Uh, is on the 90 minute mark and uh, the race may not even go that long so uh, we'll see if the rain comes it may or may not but uh, we go to the five red lights and away we go for the feature race here in Austria and we get an okay start and we'll go to the outside line see if we can make a move but Sato's there and he goes all the way around the outside great move there by Sato we had to be a little bit cautious uh, on the line we were taking the uh, can will slow up very suddenly when you're uh, on the inside line there so, uh, yeah, we just played a cautious, lost a position, but uh, we should be able to soon uh, get that back as we uh, have a look up the inside. Not quite close enough. We lost uh, so much time along that straight contact there with the back of Sato. He loses the back end, but uh, we actually got a back out of that. That'd be a bit of a uh, bump and run uh, if we took that. How on earth we didn't get front wing damage, I do not know. Delara make the front wings of these F2 cars uh, much, much stronger uh, than uh, what the teams do for Formula 1, it seems. But uh, yeah, we uh, somehow managed to get away with that and uh, can push on in this race. But uh, we've dropped uh, a spot off the start. Not a complete disaster down into seventh position and uh, still uh, ahead of our two main championship rivals who are obviously still uh, down at the back of the grid. But uh, I can confirm off pole position, uh, Guan Yu Zhou did not get a good start. And it's actually Sean Galeo who leads this race at the moment. So uh, it's been a superb start uh, by the Indonesian driver. He may be able to get his first race win today if things go his way, but uh, we'll see uh, how it goes. He needs to be consistent throughout this race. And uh, there you go, Sean Galeo uh, with the fastest lap, leading the opening lap of this feature race. Great stuff uh, by the Dams driver. But uh, back uh, to focusing on us. Uh, we're still within range of Sato. I'm not sure what the pace is like at the moment. We seem to be... Uh, dropping away a little bit uh, from Sato, but uh, as we continue on, we do make that time up as uh, we uh, just get uh, our consistency together. A fastest lap of the race uh, goes to Samaya, so uh, that's an interesting one. But uh, anyway, we uh, can't quite make the move on Sato into turn one. But as we continue uh, through the race, we do get a good exit out of turn three eventually, and we should be able to make a move on Sato soon enough if we can uh, get uh, alongside somewhere. We have a look to the inside. No, we go to the outside, round the outside of Marino Sato, but we can't quite get the grip around there. We're off circuit, and we end up uh, staying behind. And uh, Alesi with the fastest lap of the race, uh, setting a lap time now. I can only imagine he's made a pit stop, and uh, a check of the race director confirmed that uh, he did uh, have a collision and uh, he had to change the front wing of his HWA race lab car and uh, that, that is, there you go that's why he's setting a fastest lap of the race uh, as we are about halfway around the lap but uh, anyway as we uh, continue on our DRS fails that is a disaster in a Formula 2 race especially when we're in a bit of a DRS train uh, we're really going to need to push to uh, for one thing stay in this train and uh, for another to uh, try and make some overtakes, so uh, a DRS failure at this point in the race, the race. Keep this up. Uh, is not great, but uh, a fastest lap proves that we still have the pace and uh, we can still uh, continue to push uh, in this one. Our tie wear seems to be pretty good as Dan Tickton retires from the race with a mechanical failure and that brings out the full safety okay, car. Slow down, slow down. Your delta is negative, which means you are too fast. Reduce your pace. And uh, everyone is going to use this as an opportunity to come into the box, uh, at least everyone ahead of us. And uh, given that both Campos cars, Guilherme Samaya uh, and Jack Aitken, are ahead of us, uh, we will jump one of them uh, as they will have to double stack. So uh, there is one good thing, that's one less overtake. There's the double stack uh, for the Campos team. You can see on the right back there. So uh, yeah, we'll get one position here. And uh, maybe, I'm not sure, the uh, pit order in Formula 2, but uh, that could also hold up uh, the team behind them uh, as well. But uh, thankfully we don't have to uh, wait or get held up uh, by anyone, and uh, we do gain uh, that position. But uh, 
A lot of people actually, it seems, did not come into the pits. So, uh, interesting. That that is a large number of people actually. If we're in sixth position, that's half the field at least uh, that did not uh, come into box. So uh, that's an uh, interesting call by all of those guys. And uh, it is the uh, high tech of Luca Giotto who leads the race now uh, behind the safety car. Uh, of course, as I said, he is yet uh, to make a stop. So. Uh, he may be in contention for some low-end points. You can see here the uh, drivers who did and didn't stop. And uh, you can see the top 12 positions didn't stop with 22 cars in the race. That's 10 uh, minus ticks. So that's 9 cars uh, have made a stop. And that guarantees that everyone who's made a stop is going to finish in the top 9 here. There's not really any way that Giotto will be able to catch uh, the uh, tail end of the stoppers, which is uh, Alessi who now has uh, basically a free pass uh, to get back into the points after a bit of a bad start unless he needs to make another stop uh, is the uh, caveat there but uh, yeah we uh, have uh, had a huge mix up once again in this and uh, it has helped us uh, in uh, some way I think but uh, we'll see uh, we have uh, a bunch of uh, I guess slow cars in front of us now on old tires so we may be able to uh, take advantage of that while the DRS uh, is still disabled on our car uh, the cars ahead of us won't be able to go fast because they're stuck behind 12 cars on old tyres so uh, I'm hoping that uh, can keep us in the game uh, until our DRS gets uh, fixed uh, by the team uh, back on the pit wall but uh, as we are on the restart we are almost overtaken by Artem Markolov and uh, that's not down to DRS that's just a bad uh, exit out of turn 1 but uh, Markolov not able to make the move around the outside we managed to hold off the Russian and maintain our uh, effective sixth position but uh, up ahead of us uh, we are still uh, quite close to Marino Sato so we are well and truly uh, still in with a chance of overtaking him but uh, getting our DRS back will uh, would help immensely uh, with that but uh, as we continue on pit stops made for the rest of the field now and uh, well they begin to be made for the rest of the field as Sato has a little defensive move there so we're starting to pull pressure on him uh, at this point in the race. Obviously uh, for a while after the safety car uh, there is not, uh, the DRS is not available for anyone so well, that is helping us. We go up the inside of Sato into turn one very close on the apex there but we do make the move on our fellow Japanese driver and move ourselves up into what is effectively fifth but uh, currently still a bunch of cars yet to make uh, that final stop. Sato not giving up though and he's very close behind us, but uh, we will manage to maintain that position. No, Sato up the inside, very aggressive there. And uh, we have to, uh, well, we get scared off the road, basically. Sato did leave the space in the end, but uh, we, uh, yeah, had we opened up the steering a little bit too much there to uh, give him some room. But uh, we continue to fight around the outside of turn four, very deep into that corner. But we will just about keep it on the circuit. Sato, though. Still not giving up on the inside line. He's got the nose ahead as we head towards the next uh, couple of left-handers. Very close. Have to uh, take a lot of curb there to give him the room uh, on the apex. I wasn't sure if he was going to still see me there on the inside line. Thankfully, he did. Uh, left me the space. And we were able to complete that move. But uh, that was a great battle there with Marino Sato. And uh, great to see uh, he is uh, getting in the action here. But uh, we were able to make that move on him and move ourselves up into, uh, yeah, I think effectively fifth position. I'm losing track at this point, it's a bit hard uh, to keep up, but uh, continuing on now, uh, we'll see uh, where uh, we re-emerge after everyone makes their final stops, but uh, we've got uh, the other Japanese driver, Matsushita, ahead of us as we have a look up the inside into turn one, not being able to make a move there, Matsushita holds on for the time being, we're up into eighth as uh, pit stops are made for uh, some of the others, continuing on again, and we'll finally uh, get up into the fifth position, uh, that's what we should have, but uh, yeah, we are still uh, without DRS assistance and uh, at this point it is starting to hurt uh, because we just we just don't have the straight line speed to compete and uh, it is getting a little bit frustrating but uh, we do eventually put enough pressure on Masajita that he defends we go around the outside very late on the brakes there to uh, get the nose on the outside line to force him to uh, give us the space on the exit we make the move and uh, that puts us up into fourth next up is Samaya and uh, he is being held up uh, by Sean Galeo and Guan Yu Zhou, the three of these drivers battling away. We've got a good uh, line here uh, through turn three. We may be able to make a move on Samaya, but you can see with the DRS open, he's got the straight line speed advantage, so that's why uh, the DRS is so important. But it's back for us. We have 
Uh, our DRS reactivated, we go up the inside from a long way back, but that DRS helping us just get that little bit closer to Samaya, and we do make the move on the Brazilian and make our way up onto the podium places. Next up is Guan Yu Zhou, and he is still putting a lot of pressure on Sean Galeo, but uh, not enough to make him defend. We go up the inside of Joe, not really getting the space there on the inside. We were very, very late uh, with that move, but we do uh, still have a car alongside Joe, just giving us enough space on the side of the road there to uh, keep our car uh, alongside. We go down the inside of Guan Yu Joe, but uh, with that uh, dive at turn three, we did uh, cause a slight amount of damage uh, to our front wing, and that's going to affect our pace uh, for the rest of this race. We've already made uh, our pit stops, so we can't change the front wing, uh, and uh, even so, it does take a long time in Formula 2, so uh, it's not always uh, worth the uh, worth the trade-off if it's only uh, a slight uh, amount of damage, but uh, yeah, that uh, is a little bit frustrating for us. We may not uh, have the pace to chase down uh, Sean Galeo, and uh, as we continue on, you can see uh, Guan Yu Zhou uh, around the outside as we head towards the first corner, and we can't really fight. We try and keep it on the inside line, just about getting the nose in. And uh, we do actually make that move on Guan Yu Zhou. Now Samaya getting a run on the Chinese driver. And the Brazilian will come out on top there. It looks like Sato is uh, getting in amongst it there with Matsushita as well. So uh, a lot of battling uh, as we are start to starting to hold up uh, this uh, group of cars behind us. And Sean Galeo is uh, just getting away. We just can't uh, chase down the Indonesian driver. But uh, as we continue on, it's Samaya that's got the run. We're going to try and squeeze him to the inside. But he gets past before we have a real chance to there. And uh, Samaya has uh, taken that position. But Joe tries to go to the inside. We go for a dive on Samaya. He moves across in the braking zone. Contact is made. And that's a big crash uh, with Samaya. A lot of damage uh, to our front wing. And uh, we'll have to look at a replay of that. But Samaya moving across in the braking zone. To be fair, we did the same thing to Guan Yu Zhou. But uh, yeah, we're a little bit late on the reaction times there. Samaya, I don't know what on earth he was doing. We gave him a big squeeze there, but there was still space. And then uh, look, he went right to the edge of the track on the racing line and then hits the brakes, moves across in front of us. Contact is made at that point. We couldn't really avoid him. And that's it. That's... Uh, that's, that's the end of our race. We we still have all four wheels on the car, but uh, there's no way we can fight on with no front wing. And uh, Guan Yu Zhou has uh, just been gifted that P2. Virtual safety car, virtual safety car. Reduce speed immediately and keep a positive delta. But uh, VSC is deployed a penalty for both myself and Samaya uh, for that incident. And, uh, well, I assume I'm getting penalized for the... Uh, bulldozer action after uh, we went uh, off circuit Samaya obviously uh, moving in the braking zone not an ideal uh, not an ideal uh, trait of uh, a driving style but uh, anyway we will uh, go into the pit lane get a new front wing and see what we can make of it we're going to go on to the super soft uh, compound tyres which uh, I guess will be the ones that we used in qualifying as uh, we have to uh, serve the penalty here and uh, change the front wing such a long wait uh, this is going to be something like a 20 second pit stop in this race so it's uh, not looking good for us uh, with just a VSC which has uh, ended long long ago um, yeah it's a pretty bleak outlook uh, on this one unfortunately but uh, we'll see what we can do if we can maybe catch up to one or two cars but I highly doubt it but uh, Lacey actually made uh, a pit stop as well onto the uh, soft compound tyres, but uh, he uh, is in, he's not even within range for us. And as we continue on uh, towards the end of the race, our front tyre blows up. It was a 96% tyre wear, and uh, we have a puncture, and, and we have to carry that for the final lap. But... Uh, that is not the story of the race. This is, though, Sean Galeo, the Indonesian driver, has led a dominant race here in Austria, and he will win the feature race. What a drive from the Indonesian in the dams. And Guan Yu Zhou is going to hold on to P2 from a massive train of cars behind him. So it's a great drive from Guan Yu Zhou to get some good points for his season. But Marino Sato on the podium as well. What a story after the disaster of Baku. And uh, he will come back for uh, a good result. Uh, here in Austria, but uh, for us, uh, we are struggling to even keep the car on the circuit, and uh, the front left tyre, it's 
not having a good day, is it? It's, uh, yeah, it all went wrong for us in this one. And uh, that's going to be a huge problem for our championship. Matashita, I think, finished in fourth or fifth at the very worst. So he is going to score a lot of points against us uh, in this one. Uh, the only good thing, I guess, for us is we still can't keep the car on the circuit. Uh, is that Drogovic and PK were both down the order as well, so uh, we may not lose hugely uh, to them, but uh, Masashita, I'm sure, will get back up into second place in the championship and be closing that gap to us as we uh, still struggle to make our way towards the final uh, couple of corners in this race. And, uh, yeah, it's a disaster of a race for us here uh, in Austria. And uh, the worst part is we'll be starting from the back in the sprint race but uh, we'll see uh, what that race brings. But uh, as for this one, no good. No good. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. 21st position. It could have been a podium. It's been coming for a while, this one. What an excellent win for Dams. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? The safety car made a big difference today, there's no doubt about it. I can be certain, but it would have been a very different race and probably Pogion too without it. What did you know is that they came out of that situation in a favorable position. The safety car really does alter the balance of the race. And I can see our drivers making their way out now. It's been a sublime team performance, and it's the culmination of a lot of hard work. Dams are your winners today. So after years of trying, it's going to be Sean Galeo who takes the race win today. Guan Yu Zhou finishes up in second position, getting his season underway. And it's a great result for Marino Sato in third. Now, let's take a look at the driver's stand. The gap at the top of the championship has been cut down after a difficult race for our championship leader. And now, Davide Valsecchi, let me ask you, who is your driver of the day? And here's how things are shaping up in the team's championship. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. Another team that excelled today was Dams, who make further progress up the table. Goodbye for now then, but we really are just getting started. Make sure you join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. So, as I said, Matsushita gains some good points on us in the standings, and it uh, wasn't a good one for us, uh, but I think that uh, all goes without saying. Uh, Felipe Drogovic made some good pace, uh, some good positions, so uh, he's uh, in uh, a better position than us going into the next race uh, as well, but uh, yeah, just not, uh, just not great. Um, Daruvula, didn't really see too much of him uh, in this race, I guess he wasn't really uh, in amongst it too much, so uh, yeah, we lost uh, a lot in the team's championship as well, so yeah, this race in general just was not a good one, it started so well, uh, you know, getting our way through the field, even with the DRS failure, we still, know, we still managed to, uh, you know, keep it consistent, make some progress, and then uh, once the DRS came back, uh, we were right in amongst it, but then... Yeah, we've got the damage fighting with Joe. Samaya moved across us in the braking zone, and it uh, just all went all went downhill uh, from there. And then, I mean, the puncture at the end really didn't mean anything. We we're going to finish in 21st position uh, either way, but uh, yeah, that uh, just was uh, that was just the end of a bad day, really, for us. So I'm surprised we could get to 96% tire wear before the. Uh, before the tire actually blew up, that was uh, insanely lucky. Uh, it should have blown up, you know, a few laps earlier at least. But uh, yeah, we uh, we got lucky with that one. But, but still, very very frustrating to uh, to not make it to the end. But uh, oh well, it is, uh, is what it is. We made the mistake of uh, going for that move on Guan Yu Zhou and. Uh, you know, that's what you know, eventually set off uh, this uh, chain of events here, which uh, led to that contact. But, uh, yeah. 
Oh well, like I said, we'll uh, just have to uh, make the most of the sprint race. There's a wheel smoking across the line. That's gonna be cool. Let's get into the next race. We're back. For the second race, we've reversed the top eight from yesterday, and everyone here is getting ready for what's shaping up to be a thrilling conclusion to the weekend. I'm Alex Jakes, and alongside me in the dry confines of the commentary box, former 2012 GP2 champion Davide Valsecchi. Tire choice is important no matter what the conditions are, Davide, but do you see it having more significance today? Oh, you know it will, Alex. Remember that in Formula 2, there are not intermediate tires, so deciding when to switch to the wet compound can have a massive impact on the race and your strategy. Nothing tests driver skill like the wet. I'm looking forward to see what they can do. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. I will try not to let you down. But uh, anyway, it's going to be raining for the first 15 minutes of this race, so we will uh, have to uh, struggle through that and hope that uh, we can survive until the track dries up. It's a good opportunity to try and make some moves uh, in the early phases if we're feeling daring. So we're going to go to the five red lights and away we go for the sprint race here in Austria. And immediately, as soon as we have any speed up, the spray is just an opaque shield and we cannot see a thing ahead of us. We're going to stick to the outside line, hope there's uh, some room out here, and it seems like there is. And we go round the outside of a couple of cars and we're already up into 17th position. So four positions gained uh, through turn one. And if we head up uh, towards turn three, we're going to see if we can gain any more Have we ha as we have a look. Uh, to the inside line, Lundgaard uh, goes for a good move there, gains quite a few spots for himself. We're not quite as aggressive, but we're still uh, going to gain gonna gain a couple, and uh, we can't quite get uh, an exit uh, better than Callum Eilots, and uh, we lose out on that one, but it's still not another three positions gained. That's what we like to see at the start. Well done. So, uh, a great start for us, and uh, we've gained seven positions by the time uh, we get to turn four, so uh, that uh, is uh, exactly what we needed. I will certainly take that. Uh, as uh, a race start and we'll uh, continue on and try and chase down Callum Eilots and uh, the group ahead but uh, in these wet conditions uh, my pace isn't quite as good relative to uh, the other drivers as it is in the dry so uh, we'll just see uh, how this goes but uh, for now we just need to maintain position keep the pace and uh, once it dries up I think that's when we can really uh, start pushing for uh, the uh, top 10 and the points but uh, We'll see uh, what we can do as we're just about pushing Callum Eilat through uh, as uh, there must be someone up ahead uh, holding up this train of cars because there's a lot of cars here close together and there's no visibility uh, along the straights uh, thanks to the water spray so uh, that is really uh, not uh, not really helping our cause but uh, we'll see uh, if we can uh, get a good run on Callum Eilat at some point uh, we just can't seem to uh, we can't stay close enough uh, in the water spray it's just so hard to you even see where you're going so it's uh, it's not easy at the moment but uh, we'll keep uh, keep pushing through and uh, we'll try and try and just keep it consistent and uh, not make too many mistakes and we may uh, get our chance uh, eventually but uh, as we continue on uh, through this race there's actually a couple of cars in the pit lane it's not time for the dry tires as you can uh, visibly see on uh, the track surface there is still plenty of water so uh, I'm not sure what they're doing. They must be, uh, maybe they used up their wet tyres in uh, practice sessions. I'm not sure. It's uh, strange. But uh, anyway, we're up into P10 now uh, with that. So that's an extra couple of positions we do not have to have to, uh, have to worry about. But uh, as uh, we continue on, Eilat moving around, trying to uh, maybe look for a move. But he's compromised his own exit there. Out of turn three, we're going to get the run. And we'll make the move on Callum Eilat along the straight. We're still side by side, but we should be able to get the inside line uh, as we uh, head along to turn four. And we must have uh, got that move done because we cut ahead and uh, we are still ahead of Callum Eilat. But uh, moving on then, we are uh, chasing down now one of our main championship rivals, Felipe Drogovic, as Alessi uh, gets out of the way. He's allowed down. He's made several stops in this race for some reason. I'm not sure what the... Uh, what the deal is there with him and uh, a couple of other, other couple of others in this race but uh, anyway some people feeling the need to make a lot of stops as Drogovic makes a mistake we go down the inside and Drogovic has uh, just lost that position uh, we really 
Uh, we only just had uh, the tiniest overlap. Drogovic uh, must have seen us in the mirrors and uh, scared himself a bit there. And uh, yeah, he uh, made a mistake. We made the most of it and uh, managed to slip through uh, in the final couple of corners. We go up the inside of Sean Galeo and uh, make that move uh, nice and easy. Galeo though with a switchback and he may be able to hold on to this position as we don't really have uh, the power down on the exit to keep fighting on the inside uh, like we did with Sato in the previous race and Galeo manages to hold on uh, to that position so uh, great uh, racecraft there by Galeo to switch it back to the inside and uh, we have to uh, rethink uh, our uh, overtaking maneuver there but uh, a new strategy is available on the MFD we pit for the dry tyres now so uh, this is where the race uh, I think we'll uh, sort of open up for us I guess so uh, we'll come into the pits dry tires will go on and uh, we'll see if uh, we can uh, challenge for some uh, higher positions right now uh, we are in P9 some people are staying out longer it seems so uh, we may gain some positions there too uh, if uh, they um, if they oh we have a front wing change that's not what was uh, on the cards. I didn't know that we had damage on the front wing. I guess that's from when we hit the back of Callum Milot, uh in uh, the early phases. That could explain the lack of pace that we had uh, in these conditions but uh, I did not know that uh, we had that damage so that's really... Uh, it's good that we got that change but frustrating that uh, we uh, were... Well, firstly we're losing that time. Uh, losing that time uh, which uh, I didn't really know about and then uh, lost the time in the pit lane as well so uh, that's very frustrating but uh, at least we have uh, a clean front wing on the car now and uh, we can uh, push on a bit harder for the rest of this race but uh, yeah I did not know that uh, we had front wing damage but uh, anyway we will uh, continue on and try and make the most of this but we've lost a lot of time to uh, the likes of Sean Galeo uh, that we were battling with but uh, anyway uh, we catch up to Felipe Drogovic, we go up the inside as we head towards the first corner and we will get past him, maybe he was one of the cars that uh, did an extra lap because I don't think we should be catching up to him quite yet but uh, anyway, we do and uh, make the move on him next up is Samaya and we'll uh, probably be able to make a move maybe into the final corner as, or the final uh, couple of corners as uh, we are very very close behind him here so uh, can we get a run here we do have a bit of extra momentum on our side and we're going to go for the move up the inside and we will just about squeeze through down the inside running a little bit wide but uh, uh, we do make the move on Samaya and get ourselves up and into the top 10 so uh, if we can maintain this fast slap that we have at the moment uh, that will bank us an extra two points but we're not done yet we've caught up to Dan Tixum who's got himself back into contention uh, in this race after starting from the back and we're going to go up the inside into the final corner and we're going to do it again the final uh, second to last corner I think it is actually but uh, anyway we will uh, continue this fight though as uh, we are now on the back and going down the inside of Marcus Armstrong and we uh, get ahead of him too next up is Nikita Mazepin in the high tech we're going to go for a massive dive up the inside of Mazepin from nowhere that dive bomb came from Baku but uh, we get ahead of him and now we are right on the back of Sean Galeo, bit of a uh, awkward moment there uh, trying to decide whether to go to uh, the inside or just to sit behind in the slipstream but uh, we're a little bit close uh, for that and uh, we do make the move on Sean Galeo and get ourselves up and into sixth so uh, we've made a pretty decent comeback in this race that's four points but uh, then that happens so uh, yeah that was uh, the final lap of the race went for a spin and uh, we are so far ahead of Galeo that uh, he didn't even catch up to us again. But uh, yeah, we couldn't catch the group of cars ahead just pushing too hard on the final lap. We were never going to catch them anyway though. We couldn't catch up to uh, yeah, the likes of Sato and uh, Guan Yu Zhou uh, up ahead. But uh, anyway, that uh, was just about it. Robert Schwartzman uh, wins the uh, race here. So uh, here he comes uh, around the final corner and uh, it's going to be a sprint race victory here in, here in Austria for Robert Schwartzman uh, holding a huge train of cars behind him a very close finish uh, between the top five there but uh, Robert Schwartzman it is taking the race of victory we're going to come across the line for P6 okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. what a disaster of a weekend but, uh, well, at least we came away with something.
So another excellent win from Bremer. Tell me, Davide, what was the key to this success? I think this race was won thanks to the tyre management. You have to remember, it's not just about going as fast as you can. It's about consistency. It's about maintaining your speed over an entire race distance. So being able to keep the lap time competitive while still respecting the tires, that's where they won today. As we look back on a thrilling race here today, we can now see the drivers take their places on the podium. It's a familiar sight by now, as it's another successful F2 win for Prague. So it is Robert Schwartzman who takes the race victory today with Nobuharu Matsushita in second position. Jack Aitken rounds off the podium in third. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Challenge. It was not the best weekend for our championship leader, and their advantage at the top has been reduced. Now then, Davide Valsecchi, who would you say was your driver of the day? Let's give it to Yuki Tsunoda. That was a quality drive from start to finish. He can be proud of that one. And now a look at the team standings. MP Motorsport moved to the top of the table. It was great having you with us for this weekend. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you when Formula 2 returns. So, with that result, Robert Schwartzman uh, vaults himself into championship contention, tied for second with Matsushita, uh, 13 points behind myself. But uh, with that good result uh, for Matsushita and a pretty bad weekend for both myself and uh, Deruvula, we do lose the lead in the team's championship, so... Yeah, we're both going to need to uh, get our act together. It's been uh, a shaky couple of rounds for us since Monaco, so yeah, we uh, we need to need to uh, make sure the next round uh, in Silverstone uh, is a good one. But uh, we'll see uh, how uh, how that all goes when we get there. But uh, for this race, if we didn't have to change the front wing, I think we could have obviously done a lot better. But uh, obviously. I, uh, I didn't know we were losing pace. Uh, I didn't realize we uh, actually had damage to the front wing, so uh, obviously it wasn't too serious. We were still going okay in the rain. I felt a little, little bit slow, as I said, but yeah, we uh, obviously just made a bit of contact. And uh, I guess it also could have been with the Drogovic there. I'm not sure if we made contact there or if he just made a mistake, because uh, looking from that angle, it may, we may have actually made contact with him, but. Uh, Whatever the case was, it uh, cost us, you know, 10 seconds or so in the pits that we really, you know, time we didn't really need to lose, and uh, more importantly, positions we didn't need to lose. Uh, but oh well, uh, that is uh, what uh, that is what happened uh, in this one. Anyway. Other than that though, not too much else left to say. We still have the championship lead, but it is all getting very, very close. So uh, other than that, nothing else left to cover. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time for the round in the UK. Silverstone coming up next. There is the spin on the final lap. Didn't really cost us anything. Anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.